Okay, here we go. Next up, what have we got? We've got 0.7. And I already know the main man here because he is an ultimate professional. Yes, I do it. I do it. Here we go. I'm going to stand up here because he's taller than me. Yeah. Andrea Cookie, main man between 0.7. Maybe people don't know this. Why is it called 0.7? Because it's the score of the winner in our races, right? Yes. So you get 0 0.7 points when you win. Yes. And sometimes when you add up points, that 0.7 counting as a first place makes a difference to win. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. A lot of people don't know that. When you get first place, you get that 0.7, that extra 0.3 can be the separator, which exactly. is what it's for. You get this little bonus for being in first. So One with the least points wins. Exactly. So it's the difference which makes you win. Yeah. So there you go. That is why it's called 0.7. <laughs> when did you start 0.7? In 2005, in the summer, we had the idea. Yep. And then in 2006, we presented the 2007 uh, range. Okay, so, so what's this? Uh, Are we on the tw 20th anniversary next year? Almost, no, not yet, next but year. close. Next year, yeah, <laughs> no, not yet. A oh. <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> it feels like yesterday, but yeah, <laughs> quite a lot of years. All right, let's uh, go. Obviously, we're here in the Deffy Winds. Yes. Um, I was actually, we, before we go anywhere, I saw the beast walking around earlier and we were talking about stories because the beast, obviously Johan so, yes. so close to winning a world title last year, complications, but what we did find out last year, and we already kind of knew, that guy is fast. He's fast. <laughs> he's fast. He at some point, I would put money, yeah, he's he, gonna win. I, I mean, he won last year. Yeah. We have to be honest because in the end, he also missed one of the events like Gran Canaria and without this card, he was up there, you know? Yes. And uh, so, uh, for me, I mean, he showed to be there, so yeah. he just has to confirm it again. We were saying stories about, because Johan was here earlier, we haven't yeah. got him on the camera, but my first trip to the Deffy, he was using a 9 foil sail because, it, you know, the other boys had took certain sails and he still finished right up there. And the yeah, next second. race took a seven metre, people were on five fives, and this yeah. guy was 17 at the time. 17, And yes. you're like, that's where this nickname, The Beast, came from, exactly. I'm pretty sure. Exactly, yeah, and so, this year he, Selected for the Olympics. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he won't be doing the PW tour fully because he will focus on that. Oh, okay. We are good people, so we allowed him to do it. <laughs> that is very good because good, obviously yeah. the Olympics is based on the IQ foil. Exactly. So he is now what full in training with the IQ yes, foil. Yes, he well? is. He's gonna then dedicate his time after the Olympics, of course, to the PWA. But for now, he's more on the IQ foil. Yeah. And probably it's his last time because uh, he's a big guy. There's 9 as the biggest sail, and next next uh, Olympics it will be only the 8 meter. Yes, yeah, so I heard that, and that is interesting. I heard that there is a rumor that the IQ foil is, you know, the moment the boys get 9-0, that's going down to an 8 meter, maybe yes. to get the smaller guys, Asian countries, exactly, and to the make bigger it a bit guys. More, uh, let's say fair for the medium body weights. You yeah. Know. Because the, the, the IQ foil boys are going up. Yeah, they're all 100 kilos, I think, 90, yeah. 95, 100 kilos. So, yeah, unless you have that weight, you have no chance, I guess. Yeah, so that's, that is interesting. There might be a bit more of a split between the Pedway boys and the, and the Olympics. Yes, Olympic like it guys. used to be yeah. always, I think, in the end. So I think for the beast, is the only chance. Well, that's good news for us in the PWA, because exactly. that means we're going to have some exciting racing. Right, so talking about exciting yeah. racing, um, where are we going to start? Obviously, you've got all your, your sales yes. put out. Where are we going first? Let's go to this AC0. Okay. AC0. Yes. Clues in the title, maybe? Zero? Zero, Zero. cams? Zero cams, exactly. So, you know, last we were always developing our sails independently. So we had different models, like for, for slalom sailing, we had like four models, like three cam, two cam, no cam. And in the end, they were always all having their own base. And last year I thought, how about if we take the our racing sail, our AC1, we take out the laugh lease, the, the laugh pocket, we take out the cambers, you know, what could be the result? Because in the end we're working so much on our race sails, you know, yeah. that could have been like the solution to actually bring the latest ever on on an OCAM sail for, in this case. And uh, so we ripped out the, the laugh sleeve cambers and it worked. Really? It just worked, yes. It's, it's not just taking it out, there's a bit of work behind yes. it. Yes. But let's say the well, base. Essentially, that's the... That's the thing, yes, exactly. So the outline, the buttons, uh, the profile, everything is just exactly, the laugh curve, everything is exactly like the race Interesting. Sale. Yes. And so uh, no cam, free race, race, what, what, we, what you're categorizing this? 
Well, before we were calling it no cam slalom, and now we would call it race no cam. Yeah. Because it's actually feeling like a proper race hill. If I close my eyes when I'm sailing with it, you know, on a straight line, I would think I have a proper race camber sail, but it's not. And uh, so, interestingly, I was speaking to Simon Pat for the other day. Yeah. And I'm, correct me if this story is wrong, because I was speaking to him last night and I had a few beers. But he <laughs> said he was at the speed strip. Yeah. You were there. Was yes. it you? Yes. It I'm was pretty me. sure he yes, said yes, yes, you yes, asked yes. him his speed yes. and he said, oh, 40 point something. And you said 40, 41. 41 but he's like, ah, and he goes, yes, but I have no cambers. And you were on this sail then? Was that no? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I wasn't on this sail. I was, I, was, I was actually on the one with less cambers. Okay. <laughs> so not, not a race sail, but okay. same, same uh, idea as this, you know, because it's like it's actually behind us the sail. Okay. <laughs> we can check it later. But yeah, the thing is that you know the final speed of sails is very similar. I mean, if you have no cam, if you have cams, the final speed is very similar. What okay. is the difference between a cam sail, a race sail, is the acceleration and the power. Okay. Yeah. Right? So I mean, you've been using for sure the no cam sails. Yes. And the speed is not that big of a difference. Yeah. But of course, if you're having a long race and you need the average speed, the average speed of a camber sail is better just because when you go through the lulls, yeah. you just with a no cam sail kind of lose a little bit of power. And so you slow down, but if it's a windy race, there's actually would be no difference. Yeah. We've been racing like when I was in Tenerife training with the guys like this. We have been taking out our no cam sail and racing proper races. And if it was like six five powered, you know, it was no difference, nothing. nothing See, at it's, all. it's so interesting. I've been saying this in a lot of these talks, but I'm a big advocate of the no cam kind of slalom race sails, or you know, exactly what you've got yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and I still think there should be a category for it because I'd love to see the top guys racing on this sort of stuff, you know? It's fully, you know, applicable to all the other guys as well then. I don't know. I think it could be a, a winning solution for a sport in general because these sails, you know, are now so stable. They're yeah. holding a lot of wind. You know, even in this AC0 range, we used to have the no cancel in every half a meter size. Yeah. And now we just have five sizes covering the full wind range. That just shows how much they've changed. They've changed, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. And this are says that you can actually then sell easy also for the riders, you know, and uh, it would make just windsurfing easier for everyone. You know, it's, they're easy to uphold, easy to water start, easy to jive. Yeah. Nowadays, you know, they have such a nice profile in the front that when you go jiving, it's spinning down the board also and railing better. So you have a lot of control so through the jive. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't see a reason why not to have a no Is this one your best selling sale? Like what is your... Yeah, it's well, for sure this, it's for yeah. sure this. Yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. Cause um, just an interesting point that I've been the other day, you got this rigged on SDM. Yes. I did a bit of testing between SDM, RDM. What's your findings? Do you prefer the no cam race sales with the SDM or the RDM? Or oh, maybe it's there's no, different horses for courses. Well, I always think that the SDM mass is a better mass yeah. in general. Yeah. Because it's more stable. Yeah. So what happens is that first of all, it's lighter than yeah. an RDM mass in the same size because you have less carbon because the diameter is giving the structure. So the, you have the, thinner yeah, walls because it's. it's, it's yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bigger it's a wide uh, bigger diameter. So yeah. it has thinner walls. It's lighter. It it's more stable into the sail. So whenever you go over four meter thirty, over four meter, I would prefer certainly to have a SDM mast. When you go to the smaller sizes, like when you're starting to use a four meter, then I'm okay to use an RDM. But I feel it's better just because then the same mast can be used on some wave sails. If you have a quiver of wave sail yes. as well, then it's just more practical. It's you're not just doubling more, up. Exactly. But I wouldn't mind having actually a 370 and four meter SDM because you can play much more also with the stiffnesses of the mast. You, can, you know, in strong wind, you want also a softer mast, something which is more comfortable. So having an SDM, which can be like a little bit less uh, carbon, you know, so that's absorbing more the chop and the wind, you know, yeah. could be more comfortable. And with the RDM, mast is a little bit more difficult to do. Yeah. Like I said, it, they all work with the RDM in my experience, but yeah. you get this with the RDM, you get a little bit extra cloth at the front, which gives it a little bit less stability. Absolutely. Uh, with the SDM, you get this locked feel, you exactly. know, almost like a cambered feel. That's exactly the, the situation. Yeah. And, you know, we have a lot of clients saying, oh, please do the same. Can, can I use the 460 on the RDM? Yes, you can use it, but yeah. then you're going to get exactly what you said. And that's why we don't even have it in our production because, okay. I mean, we're trying to give performance and, yeah. you know, Yes, we can make it compatible and everything, but in the end, you, when you go on the water, you want to be comfortable. You want to have the performance, you want to be fast. 
Cool point edge, seven yeah. for a reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you know, which there are a lot of materials which look nice and they're light, but then they're not performing. You know, there are a lot of things which could be more practical, but then they don't really work, and that's not our strategy or our yeah. our work. We want to give the best performance, so we just put in our sails in our mask what works okay. okay so no cam no cam race sail uh, yes. moving on moving on we have the two cam zero this is cam. the one this is the one you beat Petter for on yes <laughs> <laughs> so this is the so this looks cam. different to most two cam sails exactly. if, if, if it's not me looking at it because no, the... perfect. you're perfectly right what we have is a uh, Normally the two cam sails have a camber below the boom and one over the boom. Okay. Just to balance out the mast lead. What we did is to bring the two cams just both of them below the boom. This way all the power of the sail of the camber is actually below where you're standing. And uh, it shallows up to a no cam sail on top of the boom. So it's the super mast lead, lightweight. Super lightweight, there. there's less power power that you can control because normally if you're not I mean the moment you choose this sail is because you're not looking into a full camber sail so you want something which is a bit easier and uh, or less also let's say powerful because when you have a really powerful sail and the gas comes in if you're not fit and not heavy or you're not actually just say say fit and yeah. you get lifted and every time you get lifted you, li you take out the pressure from the fin and the board loses its railing it loses its stance and it starts flying around and therefore you lose speed and control and uh, with the sail like this, where the power is just below, whenever you get the gust, you do never get lifted. So you can always push on the fin with the same pressure and you just accelerate. So you can use 100% the power of the sail, while maybe on a race sail you would use only the, maybe, let's say, 80, 70%. And in the end, you would result to be faster with a sail like this if you're not super fit. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good solution because we can actually make the mast lift super wide, yeah. having it only at the bottom. And this gives a lot of power, a lot of drive, just like a pure race sail. It's even wider than, let's say, our three cam race sail, just because it's just so low. Yeah. And even if it falls, it's actually not getting water inside because the edges on top here are very, the entrance here is small, yeah. below is small, and it's actually floating on the water. Of course, if you sit on the water for 10 minutes, yeah. you will not. But if you just fall and just lift it up and go, it will never go. You will never have water going in. So it's super light then to lift up because, of course, there's no water going up to the mass leaf. And, uh, so yeah. who are you recommending this versus the no cam? Like where do these sit for, let's say, the guys yeah. out there? Well, there are always it's two a bit ways. Of a crossover. It's a crossover because yeah. you have people who hate cams, yeah. and there are people who will never go on a no cam, right? Okay. Because just because they have these ideas that I will sail the cam sail and I don't want to go on a no cam. Gotcha. But at one point, the guys who are going on race sail, they might be like, oh, you know, I'm not sailing so much anymore. I don't have all these hours to go on the water. I won't actually be able to to sail long during the weekend you know but I still want camps okay. here they find this the solution this here they find the solution because you have that feeling of the board getting locked in like a proper race sail you have the speed you have the comfort you go through the lulls but at the same time it's not that heavy to lift up and go while a no camp sail client used to use a no cam sail you know maybe he gets interested to try to go one step ahead yeah. but he's scared of the full race sail yeah, yeah. so this is the crossover the hybrid which gives you the chance to actually learn to use cams get used to them without having to struggle to water start yeah. upholding and also not having a third cam over the boom this is the one that normally can block the rotation of the sail or makes the rotation feel heavy Hard yeah it's up there yeah so if you have it only below when you flip the sail you know it's it's forgiving even if you don't have the best judge it still forgives the a mistake that makes sense yeah. makes so, sense so this is the sail and uh yeah, it's What's that one called, sorry? AC2. Two cams. AC2. Two cams. Simple. Hey, there we go. <laughs> the AC0, no cam, AC2, two, two, two cams. Cam. Just make it simple for and the now you're going to so confuse people with the AC1. Yeah, Formula One, though. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Next up. So this is the... Um, this is the three cam, okay, and it's the AC one. The AC one is, is the name of the, our pure race sail. Yes, used to be last year, and now we brought it onto the three cam, uh, let's say free race uh, version as well. Yeah. So we have two sail called the same uh, with the same name. Yeah. One is the AC one Pro, which is this one. The AC one LTD, which is a pure race sail, okay. which we don't have now here in the stand because yeah. they're all ready to go racing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the difference between the why we call this one AC1 as well is because in the end it became a pure race sail. And you know, it's like people who go already you know, having a three cam, riders leave all the way to the top are people who know how to sail, they yeah. know what they want, you know. And uh, 
we just so what how would you define that compared to the full race sale who would buy the three cam versus the four cam let's say that the full race sale is made to go at 150 percent your capacity in the sense that you're doing pwa you're doing downwind racing slalom or some high level national events you know you're going yeah. downwind and you need a sail which makes you accelerate immediately you're going to do like 400 meters in jive so you need a brutal acceleration in the sail you need a sail which pulls you downwind you know and after four minutes the sail has to kill you yeah. you know it's like okay you want to win i'm gonna yeah. you know get you there but you need to yeah, you gotta handle me the, you gotta you have to a, handle me right to tame the beast exactly retain the beast and on the other side you know you have nowadays a lot of long distance events where actually like here the death no, win no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. you have to race uh, 40 kilometers you know one hour of racing perhaps and a sail which gives you the chance to push 150 percent could actually just destroy you you know yeah. if you're not super fit and uh, this is where the ac1 pro you know which is a little bit less uh, powerful comes in because yeah. that power that the full race gives is actually needed just to accelerate but in a very long distance you don't need to accelerate really because you're you're just going for a longer reach yeah yeah so but for lighter riders as well maybe or, or did yes the thing is that you have a the difference between one and the other in the end it's just a laugh uh, um the width of the laugh sleeve yeah okay. this is like 20 percent smaller okay. and therefore you have less power Less power sometimes when you when you have too much power, you know, you get lifted and you can't conscious that power and you think it's weight. You say, Oh my god, the sail is so heavy. It's not heavy, it's just too powerful to what you can handle. And this one doesn't give you I mean having less power, it feels lighter. Yeah. So lighter, lighter person, lighter sail feels better. But also to go half wind and upwind, a lighter sail is actually nicer because it makes the board fly easier. Yes, so less down force. Less down force, exactly. So it's just a nicer sail to, to cruise around and for long distances or just to go on a weekend if you say okay I'm working the whole week I want to go again you know same discussion yeah. I want to race with my friends but I'm not that fit you know or I want to stay on the water two hours yeah. with this one you can do it otherwise with the LTD I see a lot of friends of mine you know they just want that because of the PWA sale yeah. but then they do four runs Brutally. they come yeah. to the beach they sit down and they talk for half an hour and then they have another four runs at the end of the day they say oh we sailed two hours show me your GPS you sailed 20 minutes you know <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's the difference between the two sails. Okay. So that's okay. kind of. Uh, so that's our your your free flat race water. flat water. Yes, style exactly. I've been blasting, and then moving moving through. Moving through, we have the slash, which is our freestyle sail, and uh, a lot of people might think that it's a simple sail because when you look at it, the outline is just straight at the bottom, straight at the back. You know, it's super. It looks super simple. Yeah. The, the profile is flat, you have a bit of dark in the front and that's it. But actually, the freestylers are demanding uh, riders. Well, you, you've had, I mean, let's go back a little bit as well. Yeah. You've had Yentl Cares on the team. Yes. At the moment, you've got Jacopo Testa, yes. won the first event of the year. I mean, he's been right up there in all the world title, European Tour yes. winner. I mean, the guy's ripping, like absolutely shredding. So, you know, have they got as high demands as the Salem boys? Though? Even more, you know, I see Jacopo sometimes coming out of the water and he's just sitting like this, you know, like totally pissed, you know, that something's not working, you know. Okay. And it's about the gear. It's not about him not being able to do a move. It's okay. about the gear, you know. And uh, so, you know, we do a lot of prototyping on the sail. And, uh, you know, if he doesn't get what he likes, you know, you really see his face just like getting. <laughs> okay. So what specifically, what's the main attribute of a freestyle sail? Because yeah. people out there go, why do you need a freestyle sail? Why can't you use a wave sail or something like that? What, what specifically? Well, first of all, they need a lot of pop because um, they need to, to push the sail against the wind to get to jump in yeah. flat water. So they need to be able to get air in flat water and the pop comes normally from the dark room panel here in the front okay so it, it just gives it some belly ba something. belly uh, you can push the sail against like and just pushes you uh, okay. and then the leash is very important that it still has to open because they still want to get some speed to jump high yeah but it has to be closed because when they go f they they are windsurfing clue first yeah the, 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 the leash has to work almost all wobbly special. and yeah go left and right you know then you know so the height of the foot has is important to duck the sail but if you go too high then it has less power if you go too Laws in the way, so there are a lot of small millimeters that you need to adjust. Even the darkroom size, you know, it's like everything has to be super balanced. That you know, when I talk to Jacopo, Jacopo is like, you know, my body 
is using muscles to do a move and this my my body muscles and the sail have to be just one piece yeah. you know so i know that when my the memory of my muscle doing that move are actually following what the sail is doing and if the sail is not doing what my you know it's like yeah. they're just where so you connect want that pressure, pressure. Where you want so they're just there's such a strong connection between the rider and the sail that if something is out of place it doesn't work the move doesn't just interesting and from the yeah. outside in you're probably thinking yeah these boys these boys are just young guys just doing their crazy stuff but they're not and it's so exciting to to to, to actually develop it just because it, there's so much challenge in uh, in making a good sale it's not an easy sale to do interesting and obviously the base is easy but then to make a good sale is very different and you have to rely on that rider feedback because i'm Completely. guessing you're not doing massive air scopus no no exactly <laughs> i'm happy to go out sailing it just to make sure that the sail is balanced yeah because you know doing a lot of slalom you feel that the sail is not pulling left and right and yeah. that's my job but then there, all the rest is, is up to them so i but i have to i like to be on the sail because it's important to understand their feedback understand yeah. what they're looking for but of course when they bring us so much to extreme you know that's i can't follow it for sure that's interesting interesting yeah, yeah. But it's the same with slalom, you know, even slalom, even if I would sail in 40 knots on a 5.6, you know, you have Matteo in the past, you know, yeah. or you have Johan now, you know, they're sailing it in 50 knots, yeah. you know, and they find things out that you might not be able to actually feel because they take it so to extreme that uh, makes a difference. Yeah. That's and what is interesting about the freestyle sales is that they are normally also very good free ride sales. Really? Yes. So and early I, planing, I guess. They are early planing, they are super stable, they are easy, they're not pulling so much at the back. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, if you if you think that on a 4.8, 5.2, they're actually playing in 14 knots, yeah, the yeah. guys. You know, you take a 5.5 five of a freestyle sail for somebody who wants to just free ride, blast around on a freestyle waveboard. They're amazing, you know, instead of going to some free ride sails, just having a freestyle sail in 5.5 five would be just... I feel like it could be the best solution for a lot of people just to enjoy windsurfing, you know, just cruising around. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Okay. Mm. Um, wave sails, what we got? We don't have the pro wave sail here, got the but we got this power wave sail. Power wave. They call it, you know, this sail has a lot of names because you can call it power wave, you can call it bump and jump, you can call it uh, freestyle wave, you know, every brand gives a different name to this yeah. type of sail. So it's, but, but it's a five band wave sail. It's a five button wave sail, yes. And uh, we have the options to trim this sail in two, two ways. One is for bump and jumping and the other one is for wave sailing. So for bump and jumping, you're using the higher ah, so eyelets. you've got two, two eyelets yes, on the back. Exactly. The higher one we use it for bump and jumping and we put more downhole. And for wave sailing we're using the lower one with less downhole. So you See, can okay, let me just go through this because I have heard this before. Yes. But I got it wrong. I was under the illusion, by the sounds of it, that the bottom one was for high winds and this one was for light winds. But you just explained something slightly different there. So yeah. just say that again, because I well, think that's an interesting thing for guys. Yes. I, I always, you know, what, what can be thought is that by using the lower one, the sail is opening more, you know? Uh, yes. But when you open more, if you see it now like this, you know, you're actually getting more back. Yes, because you're holding... Back more back below, I mean, more back means more power. Yes. Yeah, if I hold it here, it's opening less, there's more resistance, and then because it's not pushing so much, you get less power. Okay. But that's depending also maybe on how the sails are developed, you know? Yeah. In our case, you know, we, are, we develop them that if you go higher, just closing more the sail, and then you get less power because it's ballooning less, let's say. Ballooning is a bad word, you yes. know, but it's just but a yeah, good idea. I don't know you yeah. And when you use the lower one, you're actually giving more power to the sail, so you get more more let's say more pull to the back and yeah. and you can actually you know if you go away sailing can actually have a little bit more especially if you're i mean not the best rider we are not using only the board to ride the waves but you're still using the sail use a little bit more grunt so that's the that's the what the reason of the two eyelets and we only have it on our wave sails not on our slalom sails on the wave sails we have it for that reason but also because in case you break one eyelet that you get washed in big yeah. waves and um, volcano rock or you know, whatever you, you know. get stuck somewhere you know you still have a second option especially if you're traveling to places where you have no say repair or you're yeah. somewhere on the other side of the world yeah so that's why we have the two even what, what ring, sizes you know. do you have in this in the in the power wave let's say from four two up to six four okay yeah, yeah so it goes yeah, yeah. pretty big yeah it goes pretty big yeah exactly okay. all right moving on moving on what we got what else you got for me what else you got if you enjoyed that we have got lots of episodes that you might have missed and there's plenty more coming stay tuned to the channel